your publications you refer to the second wave of yeah. evidence-based management. Here we go again. Okay. Would you please elaborate on this? Yeah, I mean, I think I said it was a second wave, but probably more truthfully, it's probably about the 27th and 50th wave. And I think I probably refer to the second wave in particular. It's probably a bit of a cheeky thing to say because I think I first started writing about this maybe 10 or 11 years ago, and I did some work in organisational psychology and tried to get people interested, and nobody was interested at all. So. It wasn't really until the Pfeffer and Sutton book came along a few years ago that I, essentially talking about the similar things, that I realised it maybe was a second wave. There's really the 50th, 27th wave because I think management discipline has always been interested in saying, is the research we're doing, is it relevant, can we apply it to practice? So in a sense, although evidence-based management is a relatively new way of thinking about it, actually, I think it's whenever people have tried to understand organisations and do research in them and with them, I think they've always been asking the question, can this research be applied, is it useful? Not that it has to be, but can it in principle be applied to help improve practice? So in that sense, the evidence-based management is picking up on a very, very old theme, really. In your opinion, for uh, managers, what is the biggest challenge uh, to make evidence-based management work? Okay. Well, I think for managers, the biggest challenge to try and make evidence-based management actually work is, I mean, there's so many, it's hard to know what the biggest one is, but I think one of the most important ones is that it's not clear to me where the managers have the support and resources they need to actually do it, and that's in several senses. I think, first of all, I mean, certainly in the case of human resource management, I sometimes talk to HR managers and they say they'd like to take an evidence-based approach but actually the organisation doesn't necessarily want them to. They want answers tomorrow, they've decided they want certain say in the case of HRM, certain HR techniques to be implemented, even though the manager may say well let's go and look at the evidence, let's think about this, it's too late, they just want it to be done. I think one of the first barriers is actually the organisation itself. I think the second one is even if you want to try and be evidence-based, I think the second big barrier is actually getting hold of the stuff. It's incredibly difficult, um, even if there is reasonably good research out there, to actually get hold of it. I mean, it's not actually that easy for researchers necessarily, but it's incredibly hard for an average manager to do it. So I think that's a second barrier. And I think a third very important barrier is even once people get hold of it, is to make sense of it, to critically critically appraise it to say does it make sense, is it the quality and is it relevant. Um, and then when you've done all that, the next barrier I guess is actually integrating all that together with your own experience, the context of the organisation, uh, to really try and help you make a decision which pulls together I guess all those things, your experience, the organisational context, the, the wishes and desires of stakeholders and the evidence itself, and that's quite a difficult thing to do. Okay, uh, so to, to summarize, um, it's access to information, yeah. um, it's uh, <coughs> skills for managers, yeah. uh, critical appraisal, mm -hmm. and uh, you mentioned something about infrastructure. It's the context. The yeah. context. So very important, I think, what often is the case is even where there might be some evidence, some information around that seems quite useful, it may be that it just does not apply to your organisation. So it's completely plausible that you may find some great research that seems to suggest something is useful or not, but it just doesn't apply to your situation. And I think that's the difficult thing after you've gone through this whole process. They say, you know what, I just don't think it's relevant here. But that's the skill. I think part of the skill of trying to be an evidence-based practitioner is knowing when something is and is not relevant to your situation. Thank you very much. Okay. Talk to you later.